Hey you guys! For anyone who's watching me for the first time, this is Navjot Kaur and you're here on my PhD Live. This channel talks a lot about the PhD program, how you can make your applications for institutes in India and abroad. The Science Chat show has Saili Jangam from UK, Tapas Peshin from Stanford University, Saili is from Imperial College London and Ashdeep Singh from Indian Institute of Science IC Bangalore talking about their PhD experiences, how they made their application, what is the research they are doing and how their research life looks like. So if that's the kind of content you are looking for, do check out the Science Chat show. So all of these interactions have been made because I feel that it's very very important that you get a broader perspective of what PhDs involve what different kinds of people feel through their PhDs because there'll be some underlying feelings which will be common amongst all students but then depending on different personalities, different backgrounds that people come from, different aspirations that they have, their experiences will be different and that's my motto for creating the Science Chat Show to give you a flavor of all of these. Today's video is going to be about what are the major milestones that one sees or has to complete during a PhD program. You could also think of these as the major stages of a PhD program and I'll go through them in the chronological order. So we'll start from what you're expected when you start the degree and then what are the different stages that you go through and how is it that you finish your PhD program. So the first and the obvious step is to get admission into a PhD program and I've talked about a lot in many other videos of mine. I'll link the important videos, provide links for the important videos on this subject down in the description box. So if you're looking for that kind of information, you can go and give them a look. Once you've gotten admission into the PhD program, the first thing would be to settle down in the new place, the challenges that you face, and I have videos on that too. But once you have settled down, the first formal requirement that you have to fulfill is to finish your coursework. And the coursework would be different for different students, depending on which department they are in. There'll be a few uh, mandatory courses for each department that you'll have to do and the others will be electives which you can choose based on your interest, the kind of research you're going to pursue in future and what your professor expects you to learn so that you know you can do the research that you're expected to do. So all of that coursework has to be finished mostly in the first two years of your PhD program. You can finish it in one year also but you're given two years to finish that coursework and get your grades and sort of get good knowledge in the subjects that you have chosen to study. The number of credits that you have to do will depend in this coursework will depend on the degree that you're joining after. So if you're joining directly after your bachelor's degree, you'll have to do a lot more coursework, almost double the coursework in comparison to someone who has joined after their master's program. And the number of credits would vary university to university. So that is something that you figure you have to figure out once you get admission and start uh, going to your department or in COVID era, start doing your virtual online sessions and figure out what is the number of credits that you have to do. The next step is to clear what is called as the comprehensive exam or the qualifying exam or quals as in many countries abroad. And this is an exam that tests your understanding of the concepts that you have learned through the coursework that you have done. and also see what is the basic research work that you have done till now which will include your literature survey, the initial set of experiments or modeling problems that you might have done, the simulations that you might have ran or the codes that you have written and where are you taking your project from that. So all of that and what are your future plans. So once you show that you know this is the amount of data that I've collected, these are the results that I have, with those what is your plan for the next two, three years of your PhD. So all of that is evaluated in a comprehensive exam and it is a very important milestone in the PhD program because if you don't clear the, PhD, uh, the comprehensive exam, unfortunately you can be asked to leave the institute. So it's an important uh, milestone that students have to clear and a lot of stress sort of piles up close to your comprehensive exam because you know you have this feeling of uh, is my research work enough, am I confident in my uh, subjects that I've studied and you have to do thorough preparation of coursework for a few months to be able to pass the exam. So that's an, another important milestone. So if you've talked about two milestones for now, first, finishing your coursework. Second, clearing your comprehensive exam. Once you're done with your comprehensive exam, then you have to go through your research, formulate what are the projects that you're going to work on, which would probably have been roughly formulated before your comprehensive exam. Now you have to go deep dive 
and sort of generate results, figure out the problem that you're solving, get publications. And depending on which lab you're in, which department you're in, there'll be different requirements for graduation. So some departments might ask, say, that you should have three publications before you can graduate. Some might say you should have one publication before you graduate. And some might say that you have to, say, do three novel projects or two novel projects before you graduate. So that varies from department to department, within a department, lab to lab, and of course, institute to institute. So that is something you'll figure out once you've joined an institute and a lab. And that's the third milestone, pursuing your research and being productive and generating the kind of results, either publications or data that sort of takes you closer to graduation. In addition, many departments have now introduced a yearly review program. So after your comprehensive exam from third year, on, third year onwards, you will have one yearly review, which will be similar to comprehensive, but not that strict. And there you have to present what is the progress you have made in your research. And based on that, the committee recommends as to, you know, if you're doing okay, or if there are places that you're lagging in, or if you're doing exceptionally good and they're pretty happy with your work. And that sort of also helps you realize when you might graduate and what are the things that you should be doing to in order to complete your degree. So the yearly reviews really helped me. And I hope I think they are an important uh, checkpoint to put in place to help PhD programs uh, stu programs and students and professors to sort of, you know, uh, devise their uh, goals accordingly. If your professor agrees that the work that you've done, the data that you've collected and the publications that you've had are enough for graduation, then you go ahead and give a colloquium. A colloquium is a formal presentation where everyone from your department and institute are welcome to come and sit in a research seminar where you present all the research that you've done in your PhD. It's usually a one hour long presentation and can have questions from the audience at any time or at the end. So it's it's an open seminar where anyone from your institute or department can come sit in, listen to what you're sharing and then ask you questions about it. If the colloquium goes smoothly, you're able to address the questions that were asked and the faculty members, other faculty members of the department do not have any objections on your performance in the colloquium. Then you can go ahead and write your thesis. The next step is to write all the work that you've done in those four and five, four or five years into a thesis. And oh boy, that's, 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 that's a task. So I also wrote my thesis uh, in the lockdown time. And fortunately, I had enough data that I could use my lockdown, lockdown time productively to write my thesis. It takes a while. Uh, it takes effort. And I think it's worthwhile to write it honestly because... All the work that you have done is going into a document that sort of marks your PhD, right? Once you're done with finishing writing your thesis, then the next step is to go in and submit your thesis. Most universities now have online portals wherein you can go and upload your thesis. In addition, you also have your professor and you have to provide a list of reviewers that you are going to suggest of scientists in the field that you're working in whom you think can consider and review the thesis that you've written and the research that you've done. Once these details are uploaded on the portal and all the other paperwork that the institute requires is finished, then your thesis goes into the review stage, the nail-biting stage where you have to patiently wait for a reviewer to accept the request to review your thesis, then review and come back to you with their comments. Once the reviewer gets back to you with their comments and the number of reviewers varies from university to university and the kind of reviewers, for some universities, it is an internal matter where professors from the department do it. For ISC Bangalore, uh, you need to get your thesis reviewed by one international reviewer and one national reviewer. And neither of those have to be from ISC. So both of them have to be external. Once the review is finished, you hear back the comments. Depending on the comments, if the reviewers think that your work is good enough and there's not much that they want you to do more, and there could be a few general queries that they might have or technical questions that they might want to ask you. And all of that is answered in response to the comments. And that, if found satisfactory, is taking you the closest you can be to graduation in this long period, which is called the thesis defense. Now, this is another presentation that you have to make to defend the work that you have done and tell the audiences, which will be your professor, 
a, pa a panel from your department and the external reviewers who have reviewed your thesis that you understand what you have done and you can answer the technical questions or other general questions that they put forward to you in that presentation. And if all of that goes well, then congratulations, you've defended your thesis and you can call yourself as Dr. XYZ. I didn't say Dr. Navjot Kaur because I haven't defended my thesis yet and it's still in the review process. I hope this video gives you a very deep and broad glimpse into what are the different stages of the PhD program, getting admission, finishing your coursework, taking the comprehensive exam, starting research, diving deep and doing good at your research. Once the research level or amount is satisfactory, giving the colloquium. If the colloquium goes smooth and none of the faculty members have any objections, go ahead and write your thesis and submit your thesis. Thesis will go into thesis review. Reviewers will review your work and send back their comments. If everything goes well, defend your thesis. If that also goes smoothly, congratulations. You're eligible to become a doctor. I hope you found the video useful. It helps you understand the PhD program, the milestones or the stages of a PhD program much better and hence make more informed decisions. If there are any questions or concerns that I haven't addressed, leave your comments in the comment section below and I'll be here to address them. As you have already been helping me all this while, be more generous. Share my content with students who might find it useful. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I'll see you soon. Take care.